and that human expertise is something that we will do our very best to retain in and for Scotland. Thank you. That ends topical questions. The next item of business is a debate on motions number 11672 and 11673 in the name of the First Minister on the appointment of Scottish Ministers and Junior Scottish Ministers. Members should note that the question on this motion will be put immediately after the debate and not at decision time. I will invite the First Minister to move motions number 11672 and 11673 on the appointment of Scottish Ministers and Junior Scottish Ministers and will then invite party representatives to make a short contribution. Thereafter, I will ask the First Minister to reply. Members who wish to take part in the debate should press the request speak button now and I call on the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, to speak to and move the motions in her name. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. I rise to move the motions in my name. Firstly, that the Parliament agrees that Keith Brown, Rosanna Cunningham and Michael Matheson be appointed as Scottish Ministers. And secondly, that the Parliament agrees that Annabel Ewing, Marco Biaggi, Jamie Hepburn, Maureen Watt and Aileen MacLeod be appointed as junior Scottish Ministers. I would like, Presiding Officer, uh, to first of all take the opportunity to thank both Kenny McCaskill and Mike Russell uh, they have both been outstanding Scottish ministers with strong records to be very proud of. They have ensured that this country is better educated, safer and more just than it was before they took up their posts. I am extremely grateful for all their efforts and I've got no doubt whatsoever that they will continue to play a significant role in moving this country forward. Officer, the Cabinet I am proposing today has 10 members and I am very pleased to be able to say that half of those members are women. In Westminster there are also five women in Cabinet but that is in a Cabinet of 22. I'm very proud to lead a Cabinet that doesn't just talk about equality but lives up to the principle of equality. Uh, as far as I am aware, we are one of only three cabinets in the industrialised world to have a 50-50 gender balance, a move that was hailed on Friday by the United Nations as setting an example for others to follow. Uh, I said in this chamber last week that I wanted women and girls to know that they could achieve anything if they worked hard enough. I hope this is more proof of that. It should send a message to everyone in this country that gender equality is not just necessary, but if we set our minds to it, it is achievable in every single walk of life. Uh, the portfolio changes I've made should also send another message, uh, this time about where this government's priorities will lie. We will focus on ensuring that our economy and our finances are well supported and that we continue to invest for growth in infrastructure and in every sector of our economy. We'll focus on ensuring that we have strong, high quality and efficient public services and on building Scotland's international relationships, particularly with our partners in Europe and particularly so in light of a possible in-out referendum. And we'll focus on tackling inequality, on lifting people out of poverty, especially through good, well-paid work and on empowering communities. The ministers that I am proposing today will all play a key role in that work. Keith Brown has proven his ability to do challenging things and to do them well since he was appointed as a Minister for Transport and Veterans. We can see that through the creation of the Veterans Commissioner and the management of the Fourth Road Bridge project, currently on time and under budget. He's earned his promotion to Cabinet Secretary for Infrastructure, Investment and Cities. Uh, Rosanna Cunningham has been an outstanding junior minister with key legislative achievements in two different portfolios. I have no doubt whatsoever that she will make an excellent Cabinet Secretary for Fair Work, Skills and Training. And of course, one of her priorities will be to see the living wage extended across both the private and the wider public sector. As Minister for Public Health, Michael Matheson has been determined to improve the well-being of the people of Scotland and to reduce health inequalities across our country. Um, I know that he will work just as tirelessly as Cabinet Secretary for Justice and I have got no doubt he will do an excellent job. 
I'm also proposing today five new junior ministers. Annabel Ewing's determination to secure dignity and justice for all, as we can see through her work, for example, in issues such as hepatitis C compensation, will make her a tremendous minister for youth and women's employment. Uh, Marco Biaggi has done excellent work, both as the deputy convener of the Equal Opportunities Committee and also as a key contributor to the same-sex marriage bill uh, that was passed uh, by Parliament some months ago. Uh, I believe he will bring that same commitment and determination to his new role as Minister for Local Government and Community Empowerment. Jamie Hepburn has performed exceptionally as a member of the Finance Committee and also as Deputy Convener of the Welfare Reform Committee. Uh, I have no doubt he will do a tremendous job uh, as Minister of Sport uh, and Health Improvement, following on, of course, uh, our successes this year, not least in hosting uh, the Commonwealth Games and the Ryder Cup. Maureen Watt is returning to government, having previously held ministerial office as Minister for Schools and Skills. Uh, I'm delighted she will be returning as Minister for Public Health. Uh, the NHS and the wider health agenda has been and will continue to be a key priority for this government, and I uh, know that Maureen will make a significant contribution to that. And finally, Presiding Officer, I'm nominating Aileen McLeod as Minister for Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform. Aileen's extensive knowledge of working in both Brussels and here at Holyrood, I think, makes her a perfect candidate to take on this role. And I have to say the inclusion of land reform specifically in her title should send a signal about the importance this government yeah. attaches to moving forward with the important business of land reform. Uh, so those are the new ministers I'm uh, putting forward for Parliament's approval today. I should also say, though, presiding officer, that although uh, not subject to the approval of Parliament today, I am absolutely delighted to have appointed John Swinney as Deputy First Minister of Scotland in addition to his uh, role as Finance Secretary, uh, Shona Robison uh, as Health uh, Secretary, Angela Constance uh, as Education Secretary, Alec Neill uh, to take on the Social Justice Portfolio, Fiona Hislop remaining at Culture, Europe and External Affairs and Richard Lockhead remaining at Rural Affairs, Food and the environment. All of uh, these ministers have done excellent work in government and I have no doubt they will continue to do so. Uh, there are a number of junior ministers who are also remaining within government, some of them in their existing portfolios, some of them moving to new portfolios. But collectively, as a team, this is a government now ready, willing and eager to take on the challenges that lie ahead. Finally, presiding officer, I think it's important for me uh, to stress that I am proposing each of these ministers absolutely, totally and completely on merit. Each and every one of uh, the members of my government is highly qualified with the values and the skills and the attributes that I believe this country needs. The Cabinet and the wider government will ensure that we are able to tackle the challenges we face and to work towards a fairer, more just and more prosperous Scotland. But just as importantly, uh, this government aims to reflect a country where gender equality isn't just an aspiration, but also a reality that we put into practice each and every day. So it gives me great pleasure, uh, presiding officer, to move again that the parliament agrees that Keith Brown, Rosanna Cunningham and Michael Matheson be appointed as Scottish ministers and that Annabel Ewing, Marco Biaggi, Jamie Hepburn, Maureen Watt and Aileen MacLeod be appointed as junior Scottish ministers. Presiding officer, can I first of all welcome the First Minister's new appointments? She has delivered a 50-50 gender balance for the Cabinet, something we urged her to do and something I very much welcome. I look forward to her in due course, delivering 50-50 in a parliamentary party and indeed on every public board in Scotland. Now, I note that the size of the Scottish Government has grown with two additional ministers, costing the public purse over £55,000 extra per year, but we will judge if it is a price worth paying based on whether her ministers are focused on delivering results, and I'm sure that's something she would agree with. It is customary, of course, to pay tribute to the outgoing Cabinet Secretaries, so let me start with Mike Russell. 
Um, can I ask, though, Evangela Constance, whether he's left his portrait that takes such a prominent position <laughs> in his office or whether that has been in removed? Now, Mike Russell is indeed a man of many talents. His musings can be found on the bookshelves of many a member of this chamber. Neil Findlay tells me that he got his copy of Grasping the Thistle for 16 pence off eBay. Murdo Fraser thought at the time he was being slightly profligate with his money. In it, you will indeed find some radical thinking. He suggested privatising the NHS, introducing vouchers in education, abolishing the corporation tax. Now, I'm not sure that the First Minister finds favour with many of these ideas. So on that basis, can I plead with Mike Russell, urge him now that he has a bit of spare time to write Grasping the Thistle too. <laughs> on a serious note, as a neighbouring MSP, I have on occasion made common cause with him on issues of importance, and I look forward to continuing to work with him in the future. Then we turn to Kenny McCaskill. Presiding officer, Kenny McCaskill may not be on the Christmas card list of many football fans, but you know his decision to lift the ban on alcohol at internationals at Murrayfield made him the toast of rugby fans across all of the four nations. I know one member of the Labour benches will miss him terribly as Justice Secretary, and that's Kezia Dugdale. She, for one, doesn't want him spending more time in his constituency. But again, in all seriousness, can I thank both Mike Russell and Kenny McCaskill on their public service and wish them both well for the future. And can I also advise them not to despair as Maureen Mott must offer them hope as she makes a comeback to ministerial office. So let me now turn to the new appointments. Can I congratulate all of the members on their new appointments? And, you know, whilst I may challenge much of what they do in the Scottish Government, I never doubt the commitment of those who serve in it. It is a commitment which will be needed as they have a tough task ahead. But when things go wrong, we will challenge them. But when things go right and they get them right, we will support them in their endeavour. Let me start with Keith Brown. When Keith Brown took over from Stuart Stevenson, he famously said that civil servants would be the ones that were sacked if there was any bad news about the weather. All I can observe is we have had mild winters ever since. He is now replaced as Transport Minister by Derek Mackay, who will become extremely popular with members as we lobby for our own local road projects. And can I just mention the A82 on that basis? But, Presiding Officer, I had actually strongly tipped Derek Mackay for a Cabinet position, which probably didn't help him at all. So I'm very sorry, Derek, for having done so. Can I also welcome Rosanna Cunningham as a Cabinet Secretary, joined by the latest member of the Ewing di dynasty, Annabelle. It is interesting to see two lawyers in the Fair, well, fair Work Skills and Training portfolio, and yet at Justice, we have an occupational therapist and an economist. Michael Matheson does, of course, have prior experience of the Justice portfolio as a minister, and I look forward to him continuing in that. He will, of course, recall that I have praised him shamelessly in order to get him to adopt particular policy positions. And I'm sure that unlike Derek Mackay, this actually helped him secure his promotion to the Scottish Cabinet. Let me mention Jamie Hepburn, because like Annabel Ewing, um, Jamie was a member of the Welfare Reform Committee, again tipped for promotion, of course, once he'd abandoned his love of the Val Dunican jumper. Um, <laughs> but what can I say? What can I say about Marco Biaggi, other than Marco makes me feel old? I remember going to Hermitage Academy in Helensborough as a newly elected shining MSP and there he was as a pupil sitting in the back row, even then, as he does now, growling at me. <laughs> so all, all that has really changed in all this time is where he's sitting. So I do wish him well and I will watch his progress with great interest. Finally, presiding officer, let me make mention of two of the women who have been handed very tough jobs in this cabinet that the First Minister referenced in their closing remarks. Shona Robson has been left with a very full entry by a predecessor, Alex Neil, starting with the CDF statement this afternoon, and I welcome her discussion with the families yesterday, and I hope that that's the way she intends to continue in her portfolio. But let me make particular mention of Angela Constance, who is clearly the Cabinet's trendsetter. She has been left an equally tough job by Mike Russell. 
shall be judged by the quality of Scottish education, which we surely all agree needs improvement. Famous for her Bambi heels, I met her on Sunday, disappearing into a well-known shoe shop, but enough said about that. It's a wise move, because she will need to be very sure-footed in her new job. <laughs> Presiding officer, it just remains for me to wish her, and indeed all of the new appointments, the very best in their new roles. Jackson Carlow. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I read at the weekend that yesism is now a new emerging religion, which gives a whole new context to ministerial appointments, does it not? Um, our First Minister, uh, some have referred to her already as Margaret without the humour, which I don't think is altogether the compliment it may at first sound. The previous most senior woman in politics in Scotland was Helen Liddell, who was known as Stalin's granny, perhaps <laughs> Stalin's niece is at a sobriquet the First Minister will look to. I hope, though, she will hope for slightly more than the gushing acolyte uh, who at the weekend described her as the Beyoncé of Scottish politics. But we have here her first cabinet. And I, of course, want to acknowledge immediately the service of both Kenny McCaskill and Mike Russell. Um, We've at times fundamentally disagreed with them, but in both cases I've always believed, particularly in the case of Mr McCaskill, that the views and decisions that he came to were motivated by a sincerity in his part that the decisions he took were correct. And I respect that even while I disagreed with it at the time. More surprising, perhaps, is that Mr Neil finds himself uh, still in the Cabinet. After all, he must have realised that there would be consequences to having briefed the media continually for the last two years, that he'd been tremendously successful clearing up the mess left by his predecessor. <laughs> Nonetheless, there he still sits. Um, I obviously want to thank, uh, congratulate Shona Robeson and Angela Constance. Shona Robeson, I, I've shadowed previously, and I, I know she comes now with a tremendous amount of experience to health. And I hope she will take forward the agenda that Alec Neil was pursuing of seeking to find a cross-party consensus to what will be the enormously difficult challenges we've debated many times in the chamber. She and Angela Constance, I think, will be allowed to bring joined-up government uh, to bear because Hopefully we will see an emerging new curriculum subject of the dangers to public health of wearing totally inappropriate footwear. But <laughs> we wait to see. I'm delighted by Keith Brown's appointment. I have found him personally uh, to be someone who is very courteous uh, and willing to assist and also uh, to listen carefully. Um, I am tremendously impressed that he's managed not to be put off by Looney Tune commands whispered off stage, if I can put it that way. Uh, but Ms. Mr. Brown and Ms. Constance, of course, stood in this election and therefore reaped the rewards. Mr. Brown, therefore, can look at Mr. Mackay and Mr. Yusuf in the face and say, who dares wins, boys? <laughs> Those two, after all, did have their famous canteen granita-like pact where they thought they would sit this election out in the expectation that the rewards would be theirs. My advice to them is start plotting now, boys. It's only 18 months till your next chance comes around. Michael Matheson has been a very diligent and, I think, straightforward politician. I'm delighted to see him uh, get his promotion. Rosanna Cunningham has had the answer to the question that has been put by the Beatles in so many times, just in the nick of time. She now knows, will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? <laughs> And Nicola has said, and Nicola has said yes. Aileen, Annabelle Ewing and Aileen McLeod, um, have I, how shall I put this, worked very hard for their appointments and I congratulate them. <laughs> there are two master strokes, two master strokes of political diplomacy in this reshuffle that I congratulate the First Minister on. The first is to disinter Maureen Watt as a former minister because this sends a signal to all those ex-ministers sitting in the back benches, you can live in hope. There is a chance. Stay loyal and I may be kind next time around. And of course, slim, trim, new health guru Jamie Hepburn also gives hope to that backbench group known as the Lost Causes, you know who you are, who can also now see that there still is that chance that your time might come. Of course, nearly every woman in the SNP has been given a chance in government. I wondered over the weekend what Christine Graham, Joan McAlpine, Christina McKelvey and Sandra White might have said or done. And I was quite bewildered until the First Minister's official spokesman issued a qualifying release telling us why Sandra wasn't in the government. I have to say I won't repeat the language, uh, presiding officer. You and I are demure and shy and retiring personalities. <laughs> and certainly Mr McIntosh and I have never heard language that might be appropriate in Butte House in White Craigs or Newton Mearns like that. 
Nor has there been any place for Jim E.D. or for Mark McDonald or Dennis Robertson. The latter, I have to say, I'm especially sorry about, as when Nicola Sturgeon pursues her dog whistle policies, she would at least have got one bark of approval. <laughs> Marco Biaggi, sincere and thoughtful as an MSP, I hope sincere and thoughtful as a minister. Now, the last time I did this, the First Minister was kind enough to say, as then Deputy, that I had made no substantive point whatsoever, which I freely admit <laughs> is my remit today. Tomorrow, I think, is when we see the government's programme and when we'll be able to respond to the substance of it. I do note that in 2007 there were five Cabinet Ministers and ten junior Ministers. There are now nine and thirteen. But it, as Jackie Bailey said, we want to see if they're worth it and the next few months will prove whether that is the case or not. May I finally offer our unreserved congratulations to Mr Swinney as Deputy First Minister. He is a sort of SNP loyalist to his boots, but across all party and I think wider Scotland, he's regarded as a decent, committed and understated man. His personal efforts on behalf of MS, which I've been, and others have been happy to support, I think are testament to that and we certainly wish him well. May I conclude with this final observation? Gender balance has been mentioned several times this afternoon, and it is absolutely true, presiding officer. In a backhanded compliment to that huge Hollywood blockbuster, Three Men and a Little Lady, this parliament is now fronted by three ladies and a little Willie Rennie. Uh, <laughs> on that note, presiding officer, I wish the new ministerial team well in their endeavours. <laughs> Mr Rennie, would you like to follow that? Um, I was... <laughs> Alison McInnes, halfway through that, leaned over and said, don't worry, Willie, nobody is quite like Jackson Carver. <laughs> Tremendous, Jackson. Um, it has to be commended today for that the First Minister has secured gender balance in her ministerial team. I think the fact that it has been recognised internationally is something that I think everybody in this chamber should be proud of. But even more importantly than that, it will send a powerful message, not just to the young girls, not just to the young women, aspiring young women right across Scotland, and in fact, further afield as well. But it will also send a message to men and young boys that they should treat women equally as them and equally in this parliament as well as the rest of Scotland. I also hope that this becomes the norm rather than the exception. I hope that we don't in, in future ministerial appointments remark on the fact that we have achieved gender equality. I hope it just becomes accepted as something that should always be the case. I'm sure that they, all the ministerial team have been tasked with working constructively in the spirit of the First Minister's remarks last week. And if so, they'll find willing participants amongst the Liberal Democrats and I'm sure others in the Chamber. I'm reluctant to, to add a discordant note, but it is, we do need an explanation as to why the ministerial team has grown to 23. John Swinney sitting next to the First Minister did say in 2003 that he wanted a team of 15 because government any bigger than that was bloated. We've had a 50% increase from that time, and we do need an explanation. I think it's not the most significant part of today, but we do need an understanding as to the rationale as to why that has happened. Um, and despite my questions about that, I do congratulate the team, the team that has been appointed. I know that Alison McInnes is looking forward to working with the justice team on trying to change some of the justice policy perhaps reining back on stop and search, the armed officers, corroboration, and also bringing democracy back into our police. Jim Hume wants to discuss the pressures in our hospitals and also the need for equal status for mental health alongside physical health. And he's also keen to talk about his private bill, his member's bill on smoking in cars with children. Tavish Scott will be pressing the case for transport for the Highlands and Islands in the North East, but also the rollout of the common agricultural policy. And I want to see how Liam MacArthur is going to get on with the, the new education team. Um, it's been a, a, a bit of a shaky start, um, but I'm sure he's got the talent to rise to the challenge. The expansion of nursery education, college places, curriculum for excellence and university funding are all big issues that need to be discussed and we need to work together to achieve those great things. 
There will be many challenges in the remaining period of this Parliament, but the First Minister knows that we will work with her where we agree and advise her where we do not. This will be an exciting and proud day for those entering government for the first time. For those with new portfolios, it will present a fresh challenge. And for those who have kept their old jobs, there may be a secret sigh of relief. But for all of them, this is an important day. The, bur the burden may be great. At times, it may be significant. But the heavy and great opportunity that we have before us to serve your country is a wonderful one. And I'm sure many other people in this chamber would love to share. So in that spirit, I wish you all well. Patrick Harvey. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I add my congratulations uh, for those who are being promoted, uh, appointed or indeed reappointed to the uh, Scottish Government? And, uh, and my thanks also to Jackson Carlow for his usual bravura performance uh, on these uh, events. I'm, I'm very grateful he decided to leave me out of the end of his speech. Uh, Wilde says the only thing worse than being talked about is not being talked about. I think that was the exception to the rule. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, the outgoing uh, ministers as well, uh, cabinet secretaries who, who deserve our commiserations, uh, this is a moment to, to mention something positive, I think, in, in respect of each. And Mr Russell's commitment to the principle of keeping higher education free of fees in Scotland is something which uh, I'm sure remains important to the Scottish Government, but he was uh, insistent throughout his term in office on that principle. And as for Mr McCaskill, I'm grateful for the contribution he made to supporting my own member's bill a few years back on hate crime. Uh, he gave a, a, a clear commitment to supporting that legislation, uh, including the support of his officials, and I'd like to put on record my gratitude for his, uh, his support in that. Uh, there's only time to mention a, a, a few of the, the individual appointments. I'd, I'd like to uh, single out Marco Biaggi in particular, first of all, as the First Minister said, for his commitment on the uh, equal marriage campaign, both inside and outside of Parliament. Uh, I believe the First Minister and I, diaries permitting, uh, are going to be co-witnesses to, to some mutual friends uh, at the end of December. Way before that, though, Marco Biaggi and I had our own confetti moment, uh, showering confetti over a, a, a symbolic uh, same-sex marriage, uh, which took place as part of the campaign. Uh, and that's uh, a moment I'll remember. I, I'll also miss him, as will my colleague Alison Johnson, on the Energy, Economy and Tourism Committee. Uh, Marco Biaggi has earned far more respect than I have amongst the radical vegan wing of my own party, uh, and uh, the, the supply of vegan scones will be diminished to zero, I should imagine, on the EET Committee uh, once he's moved on. I hope the catering instruction has been conveyed to St Andrew's House uh, for him. Uh, as for uh, the role that he takes on, working with Alex Neil, uh, they will have responsibility for a number of important issues. The, the need to address the, uh, the, the ongoing long-term challenges in reform of council funding. The, the council finance issue is something which can't be ducked uh, for much longer, as well as the need to reinvigorate our local democracy and uh, local community empowerment. These will be issues that he has an important contribution to make. And between the two of them, they'll also have responsibility for planning policies and planning decisions. Uh, in particular, I would highlight the forthcoming decision on the first unconventional gas decision, which has been called in by Scottish ministers, which many of us in Scotland, including constituents of many SNP backbenchers who share deep concerns about this uh, industry, many of us will consider that a test case. I'd like to uh, mention just briefly Mr Wheelhouse, who's moving on to other responsibilities. Uh, he's, he's due some credit, I think, for his role uh, in the climate change brief. Credit, but as usual for me, with caveats, uh, I think it's clear he did understand the argument on unburnable carbon, the argument that we cannot simply regard all fossil fuel resources as economic assets, because if we burn them all, uh, we'll do far more harm to the economy than by anything else. Uh, but the fact remains, the Scottish Government hasn't yet managed to meet any of its climate change targets. And as Eileen McLeod takes on that responsibility, alongside land reform, which I'm glad the, the First Minister picked out in the job title uh, as something which remains an unfinished task, 
as, as Eileen takes on the responsibility for climate change, I do hope, I do hope that she's taken that on in the full understanding that the first three missed targets, they were the easy ones. And the next annual target, which is due to be reported on, uh, represents a single year cut that's many times greater than the cumulative cut that's supposed to have been achieved already. This is when it starts to get hard, and she's going to have to advocate vociferously with uh, the rest of the Scottish Government for the policy changes that are necessary to achieve those targets. Uh, I hope that she'll be willing to work with Derek Mackay in transport, for example. And unlike Jackie Bailey, I'd like to reassure Derek Mackay that not all of us will be lobbying him to approve new road building projects. Uh, in fact, many of us will be hoping that he's finally able, that he's the first transport minister in a Scottish administration, finally able to have a sustainable transport policy. That's one of the things which will be crucial if Eileen MacLeod is to be successful in ensuring the Scottish Government meets its climate change commitments. Can I congratulate once again and wish well all of the ministers who will be serving in the Scottish Government. I now call the First Minister to reply. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Thank you to everybody for their contributions. Uh, Jackie Bailey managed to stay almost entirely positive uh, in her contribution, which just shows there is a first time for absolutely everything. Uh, I now eagerly anticipate uh, as promised, the first time she praises the work of government. Uh, I have to say, though, I, I do sympathise with the comments Jackie Bailey made about Marco Biaggi making her feel old. Um, I had exactly the same feeling when I saw another member of my government, who shall be, uh, remain nameless, Hamza Youssef, uh, on television last week saying that the first time he met me was when I came to speak to his modern studies class. Uh, so I have sympathy with uh, how she feels today. Um, Jackson Carlaw, thank you very much for reminding me how much talent I have here on the back benches. Um, I have to say, in all seriousness, presiding officer, uh, I hadn't appreciated uh, how difficult picking a government is because there are many, many people on these back benches that I would have uh, loved to appoint to government. And I say to everybody, there is no member uh, of the SNP group who should not aspire to ministerial office as I ensure that at all times the government that I lead has all of the best talent within it. I think, though, my best revenge for the remainder of Jackson Carlaw's comments is simply to leave him alone to the tender mercies of Rosanna Cunningham <laughs> and say that it was very nice knowing him and wish him all the best. Uh, moving on to Willie, uh, little or otherwise Rennie. Um, thank you for your kind comments. Uh, can I say very briefly, and this may be an issue we can come back to, uh, at greater length on another occasion, but the size of the government and the allocation of portfolios is what I deem to be appropriate to meet the challenges that I think we face as a country and also to prepare for the substantial new powers that we have been promised by all of the other parties in this chamber are about to come to the Scottish Parliament. So that is uh, the reason for the shape and uh, the allocation of my government. And as Jackie Bailey said, we will now get on with proving our worth through the job that we do. And finally, uh, Patrick Harvey, uh, thank you for being both constructive and also, as you always do, for laying down challenges to the ministers that have been appointed. And I'll end by saying I very much uh, look forward to being a co-witness uh, with Patrick Harvey at one of the country's uh, first same-sex marriages on Hogmanay. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Presiding Officer, to everybody who has contributed to the debate. That concludes the debate on the appointment of Scottish Ministers and Junior uh, Scottish Ministers. We now move to the questions. There are two questions to be put as a result. The first question is that motion number 11672, in the name of the First Minister, on the appointment of Scottish Ministers, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is agreed. Um, and as the Parliament has agreed to the First Minister's recommendations, she may now invite Her Majesty to approve the appointments of Keith Brown, Michael Matheson and Rosanna Cunningham as Scottish Ministers. The next question is at motion number 11673 in the name of the First Minister on the appointment of junior Scottish Ministers be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is agreed. And as the Parliament has agreed to the First Minister's recommendations, she may now invite the, Her Majesty to approve the appointment of Annabel Ewing, Jamie Hepburn, Mark Biaggi, Maureen Watt and Aileen MacLeod as junior Scottish Ministers.
Thank you. We now move to the next item of business, which.